All right, thank you for that, D. As we get on to the final segment of today's program, Nona Muchimuch Pale Twitter Nasema Wago and Farm. Wagwan. Thank you for staying with us this far. We now want to get on to our health segment. And this is all about your health and wellness. These are areas that most of us struggle with. We get to a point where in life we put out the, ourselves through some crazy diets, excessive exercising, just try and get a hold of our health and live a well life. But could the problem be that we do not really understand what health and wellness really encompass? Well, that is what we want to help you understand today and to help us with this discussion today. We have with us in studio Emily Wahome. She is a nutritionist, an author, and a wellness coach. Good morning, Emily. Good morning. How are you? Good, good, good. Thank you for making time to be with us today. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Karibu sana. Are you on the social platforms? Yes, I am. Maybe you can just say hi to our viewers and give us a social media handle so that they can also interact with you there. Good morning. Good morning, Kenya. My name is Emily Wahome. I'm on Facebook as Emily Wahome. I'm on Twitter at Mil Wahome and also on, on Insta Instagram as Emily Wahome. So you can follow me there. Uh, so that we can learn more about health and wellness, which I'm very passionate about. Absolutely. Yes. And then again, questions, comments, clarifications, we welcome them. Use the hashtag Good Morning Kenya at KBC Channel 1 at Jane Moboy. We will be getting to them in a bit. So before we even get to the details, you know, looking at the general population in our understanding of health and wellness, do you think at some point we misunderstand what wellness could be and we just go all out with what, with what we think is right. Thank you so much for that question. Mm -hmm. um, for us to understand this, uh, let's first define what health is, mm -hmm. what is wellness, so that we, we are in the same page. Yes. So health, I uh, will tackle health definition <coughs> according to World Health Organization. Yes. Because I'm also in academics, I lecture at Mount Kenya University, Department of Nutrition and Dietetics. And uh, we like referring to information that has been verified. Yeah. So World Health Organization usually define health as a state of complete physical, mental, uh, social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease and mm. infirmity. So Emily seated here may not be having a particular disease, or you may not be having a particular disease. But that doesn't mean you're healthy. Because, mm -hmm. for example, if you're stressed, if you're going through mental health, if you're going through emotional stress, it means that you're not well. Yes. So we need to understand that, uh, that aspect and be very keen because we usually ignore that bit of emotional and mental wellness mm -hmm. and we've seen how it is affecting the population. Okay. Such that we only go to hospital, go for help when and I'm having bad. headache, yeah. I'm having stomachache. But when I'm so stressed or depressed, I just close myself in a room at home. We've seen even the suicide cases have gone up because of mental illness and mm. emotional stress. Okay. Yes. So when we look at health, it's generally, as per definition, the absence of disease and the likes. Yes. But when it comes to wellness, it goes way beyond just absence of disease and all. Yes. Actually, even health is not just the absence of disease. Mm. Is that complete? You're physically well or you're physically healthy, you're mentally healthy, mm -hmm. you're socially healthy, yeah? So even if you don't have uh, diabetes, you don't have cancer, but you have emotional stress, yes. you can't say you're healthy. That is what we need to understand. All right. We have to look at all aspects of our health, not just the physical mm -hmm. health. Then when we come to wellness, we define it as that act of having daily healthy habits. Daily, the key word is daily, mm -hmm. healthy habits, that will culminate at the end of the day, having a healthy lifestyle. So if you talk about wellness, you're not just talking about those things we do, like this week I'm having a crash diet because I want to lose weight. Mm. That is not wellness. What do I do every day to contribute to my to overall well-being? Uh, and we are still referring to all those areas of wellness and health. All right. Yes. Now, even just looking from where you're coming from, looking at the studies that have been done, what is the importance of wellness for just anybody out there who might be struggling with understanding or even just taking care of their, their diet, watching what they eat? Why is wellness an integral part of any individual? Oh, there's this uh, saying that people say, we keep saying it, that health is your wealth. Mm -hmm. When you're not healthy, 
you cannot even talk about wealth because we've seen uh, some of us uh, sometimes uh, using even all the wealth they have to pay hospital bills, for example. Yes. If I'm in pain or I'm, I'm unwell, I cannot even perform well where I'm working. Whether I'm an entrepreneur, whether I'm in a career, I can't perform as per is expected because I'm not in complete well-being. Then uh, in this life also, I may not have a disease, but there is that word that we call thriving. Mm -hmm. Are you just surviving or you're thriving? You know, sometimes um, being unwell <coughs> makes you not live your life to the maximum or not be able to live your life and exploit your full potential. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, if over time I have, pil uh, have piled too much weight, I'll find myself not able to climb stairs. I'll find myself having fatigue yes. most of the time. So I am not able to execute my duties as is expected because I either have pain or I have ha I'm having too much weight I'm carrying. Sometimes it even causes. I, I have sometimes clients who come see me. They are telling me I have pain on my joints. Mm -hmm. When we check their calcium levels, they are okay. But sometimes it's the weight that is too much. It's exerting pressure on your knees. So you start getting pain. So this aspect of wellness, that's what you're saying, it is overall. Okay. So even when you're losing weight, you're not just, it's not just about weight loss. Yeah. I may lose weight, but I am unwell because I am not taking all the nutrients that I require. Some of us deprive themselves of food to lose weight, mm. which I think we are going to come to when yes. we're talking about misconceptions. So wellness and health, they, are, they work together. They are, uh, they are inter interrelated uh, because it's one and the same thing. All right. And we need to embrace both. All right. Yeah. Now, I was just doing my research and looking at the larger uh, umbrella that is wellness. There's so many other sub pillars that fall into this and today i want us to just look at four of them because we cannot exhaust them in this one sitting and i want us to start with two that are related but still separate and this is physical wellness as well as nutrition they go hand in hand but let's start with nutrition because that is an area that most of us struggle with when we talk about nutrition wellness it and a pillar of wellness what really does it cover thank you so much uh, my mantra as a nutritionist is let's keep it simple. Mm. Most of the time we want to make things so complicated, we want to make things so abstract until mm. it is so difficult to do it. Yeah. So what I want Hence to Hence the say, struggle for so many people. You know, the, the, yet it is a struggle every day. Yet mm. you shouldn't be struggling actually to eat a healthy meal. It is not even very, it's not even expensive to have a healthy meal by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's keep it simple. What do I mean by this? Nutrition is basically having a balanced diet. Having a balanced diet from the groups of food that we all know. So we have two groups of foods that we call macronutrients and micronutrients. Mm -hmm. So macronutrients in simplicity is the carbohydrate. So the carbohydrate is the ugali, the, the rice, the chapati, the starchy eat. foods. Okay. Then we have our vegetables. Mm -hmm. And we are blessed in Africa. We have a wide range of vegetables that we, we are supposed to choose from. Mm -hmm. And they are available in the market. They are available in our farms. Then we have the fruits and vegetables. Then we have... Uh, sorry, fruits and vegetables are in micronutrients. In macronutrients, we also have we have um, carbohydrates. We've said we have we have um, proteins. We have fat, mm -hmm. and then we have the proteins. Those are the three major uh, macronutrients that we have. So ask yourself every day: Am I having a protein? And a protein may come from a plant or may come or from animal. animal. So if I'm mm -hmm. having chicken, that is protein from an animal source. If I'm having um, dengue or lentils. I'm having some prote protein in it, then but also we need to please. know you're having protein and starch at the same time in plant proteins. That's something else that people don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then um, am I having fat in my diet? Yeah. Am I having fat in my diet? Because some people actually have come to fear fat. Mm. I do not want to put any fat in my food because I believe if I have fat, I'm going to get to fat. Gain and those are some of the misconceptions that you're talking about. But it's really about about uh, moderation. So mm -hmm. and then we talk about micronutrients in simplicity. Is your fruit, is your vegetables. Are you having your fruit? Are you having your vegetables on a daily basis and every meal? And then now we come to portioning. How are you portioning mm -hmm. each and all, every of these <laughs> food? Because that is where the biggest problem is. Like yes. us Kenyans, we love meat. When you go to social places and I am seated with you, a Jane, and we order for meat. Imagine we order for a one kilogram of meat. Mm -hmm. And me and you, we, call, we take that meat and finish. We take ugali and all that. Look at that portion. So that is what is making us put on a lot of weight because we're having large portions than 
we require. All right. So simply that is what nutrition is, having your all the groups of food in terms of diversity and also portioning them in the right healthy way according even to your level of physical activity, mm. your age, all those factors uh, come into, into play. play. And all that's right. where the nutritionist comes in. And then that just ties straight to the physical uh, pillar when it comes to wellness. Now, looking at these nutritional aspects that you have very beautifully break, uh, broken down for us, what is the direct relation it has to physical wellness once we maintain a balance, when we underdo it, and when we overdo it? Very briefly. Thank you so much. So physical wellness is basically, let's keep it simple also. Mm. Some of us believe for you to be physically, physically well, I have to register in a health club or in a gym. Mm. And I'm not saying that is not good. I also do it sometimes. But if I don't have time to go to the gym, Jane, does it mean that I will never do any form of physical activity? I think that's where I've been going wrong. Yeah. If you don't have time to go to the, uh, the gym or anywhere, look for a form of physical activity, which we can do. You can uh, run. You can jog, you can even, uh, during the times of uh, COVID when we were on lockdown, I learned that there are YouTube videos where I can put and actually do the exercises in my house mm. and I do the physical activity. So let's keep wellness simple. So physical wellness is so interrelated with your nutrition because we know really when you talk about calories and I don't want to go to very abstract things. I want very, to keep the it foundation. Very simple, yes. the foundation. So when you're talking about your wellness, you're talking about, you're looking at, this is the amount of food I'm eating. How much am I burning? How do we burn uh, the excess fat? Because at the, at the end of the day, mm. whatever we eat is in excess, is stored in form of fat. So how do we burn that excess fat? We can't burn it when you're just seated. We have to have some form of physical activity. And we must say that we have a challenge today because uh, compared to the olden days, I remember when I was a young girl and growing up, mm. we didn't have means of transport in the village. So we used to walk a lot. So we didn't go for physical activity, but we had involuntary physical activity. Mm. But today, most of us, even if I'm not driving, this Uber and this, all this. So we find ourselves leading sedentary, lifestyles and that is what is leading to so many of the non-communicable diseases we're having today like diabetes cancer high blood pressure arthritis and all others okay and if you look at nutrition which you've just spoken about there's a rise in overconsumption of what we call junk foods mm. when i pass through towns like in nairobi i'm not saying that uh, once in a while you shouldn't enjoy a plate of fries but how often are you doing it how often are you enjoying a plate of fries how often are you enjoying that pizza and I'm not condemning the foods, but I'm saying how often, the frequency. Mm. Such that if for my lunch time I work in uh, CBD, I don't carry lunch from home, and that's what I'm having every day. You must, we must agree that I'm having food that is very high in fat because it's deep fried, mm. and then it's high in starch. You see? So we need to look at the food we are eating. We eat it in moderation. We look at frequency. And if you are having healthy food most of the times, then we are not going to struggle with the diseases and overweight and obesity because overweight and obesity, we must agree, is also on the rise in this mm. country and worldwide. All right. Yes. So overdoing has consequences. Underdoing has consequences. The beauty is in finding the balance. Moderation. All right. Now let's come to, I'm going to skip a social wellness for now and we move on to emotional wellness due to the interest of time. And this again is an area that many of us just focus on when you are in a relationship forgetting the general well-being uh, or rather the general well uh, state of well-being that you need to be on a constant tell us a bit about emotional wellness maybe what it encompasses and why we need to put more attention here and especially on a very individual point of standing Exactly. So uh, emotional wellness is also very crucial. It's not just about nutrition and physical wellness. Mm. You see, um, some of these areas of wellness, there are things that you may not be able to observe. And the reason why sometimes we don't uh, put so much emphasis and effort on them is because people out there may not be able to see uh, whether I'm emotionally well or not mm. until the day I overreact on something. Like I'm in the office. They manifest. Yes, they <laughs> manifest. I'm in the office and I have an outburst. Mm. I'm there, I'm screaming, I'm shouting at people or I'm crying. That is when someone will notice this person is not emotionally wow. stable. Mm. So emotional wellness is being in control of your emotions. Are you in control? And what brings that emotional wellness is what you feed your mind with on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Is your environment the people you surround yourself with? 
Is even the books you read on a daily basis. Is the information that you listen to. Is the kind of relationships you are having. Mm. Such that if you're always in a toxic environment, it is going to affect your emotions. Mm -hmm. If you're not aware of yourself, because we are all different. There are those people who are high tempered, others are, are you know, others are a bit, little bit calm. Are you also aware of you, who you are? Mm -hmm. Am I aware as Emily who I am? Such that if I'm aware that I'm high tempered or is it short tempered, having that awareness makes me be conscious and work hard to be a better person than I, than I am. Mm -hmm. Because when I'm not emotionally well, it means that I'll also not keep my relationships. I think you agree that, Jane. Yes. And also it means that it will affect my overall health. Because if every time I'm high strung, I'm angry, I'm high strung, I react over very small issues, then it's going to affect my overall well-being. My blood pressure will keep spiking because I'm always on this person who is high strung, mm. who is quarreling with people, small things happen and I have outbursts and all this. Okay. So the important thing is first being aware of who I am. Am I emotionally well? How can I improve? What books am I reading? Like just to give uh, an example, in, in a short brief, uh, I've, I, I said I'm an author. I authored this book, The Journey to Purpose, Keys to Maximum Living, based on my own struggles, mm -hmm. uh, my journey to discover my purpose. So I found myself uh, progressing in my career very well, but at some point I found myself having too much anxiety and had been promoted three times in three years, uh, thanks to my employer, and I knew I was doing well. But at the same time, I started experiencing anxiety and asked myself, what is the cause of this anxiety? So I found the cause of anxiety was actually because I had this feeling that I need to do more than I was doing. Mm -hmm. I asked myself, am I leaving my purpose? I love my students so much. I love when I interact with them. I love lecturing. I love teaching. But I found I also have another purpose of impacting people to live a healthier, fulfilling lives. And that is not what I was not doing. So when I walked that journey of anxiety, you can tell that I was not emotionally and even mentally well. Yes. And it's actually compromised on my health. So that led me to writing this book so that I can help other people who may be struggling mm. with the same thing of discovering their own purpose, why God created them. And that gives you fulfillment. That gives you joy. That makes you feel that you're contributing to the overall well-being of people mm. and even to the community. And it feeds into your emotional well-being. And it feeds into emotional well-being. Yes. Now, that brings me to this aspect that we call emotional intelligence. And for some people, they have had to learn the hard way how to understand their emotions, how to deal with their emotions, and how to control their emotions. For those who struggle with getting a grip of their emotions and just learning to make decisions that are hard but sometimes necessary where emotions are involved, how would you advise them to get onto this path of emotional wellness and emotional intelligence? Yes, it's uh, going back to where I have come from, is first of all being aware of yourself. Mm. And that is usually and a journey. And your struggles. And your struggles. That is usually a journey and it's usually a period whereby you have to have meetings with yourself. You know, most of the time we have so much noise in our heads we are working the whole day, we are mm. having people around us. So you find yourself never having some quiet time alone. The only time when you are able to discover yourself so much is when you're in quietness. When you're alone and in quietness, you're not speaking to anybody, you're speaking, I'm speaking to Emily. Mm -hmm. So I refer maybe to situations that I've been and ask myself, I analyze the situation. Like probably maybe I had an outburst in the office and I analyze that situation and ask myself, how well would I have behaved in such a situation? Did I have to shout at that person? Did I have to overreact? You become aware of your emotions and you start slowly working on them and if you find yourself not able to deal with your emotions, that is where we say you seek help. Mm -hmm. You seek help from relevant people. You can go to a psychologist. They are, they are trained to help you in that. And also, I have talked about what you listen to, the books that you read, and also the people you surround yourself with. It is very important to take care of your emotional well-being. Okay. And if you want to stay <coughs> calm, also avoid situations. If you know that this person, every time I encounter them, they make me angry. Why do you want to the keep them? So avoid those people or avoid those situations that always make you become emotional or overreact. Now, that brings me to this whole other aspect of misconceptions that we have about wellness. And we can start with emotional wellness saying that you have to deal with your triggers head on to help you harden against them. Is there something that you have found works or it's counterproductive 
facing your triggers to sort of make you stronger when it comes to wellness and especially emotional wellness? I think to some extent, uh, previously I was a victim of that, of suppressing emotions. Mm. You cannot deal with your emotion by suppressing them. You must face them head on, such that if I'm feeling sad today, I'm not going to suppress that sadness. I should allow myself to feel sad. I may be feeling sad because I lost my daddy, for example. Mm. And it is normal to feel sad. But am I going to stay in that sad sadness forever? No. Staying in that situation forever is what is a problem. But as human beings, we are human, we have hearts, and therefore, feeling sad or feeling emotional is not a sin. And mm. we should allow ourselves to do that. Okay. Feel it, but then deal with it. After I felt sad, I need to ask myself, what can I do to deal with this sadness? Can I deal with it myself alone? Uh, do I, can I go and share this problem with my colleague or my close friend or my close family? Or if it is getting out of hand, like I feel I'm so stressed, I'm not able to deal with it. Mm. Can I go to a psychiatrist, for example, a psychologist, they help me walk that it. journey. Okay. I think as Kenyans, we need to start embracing mm, counseling, that therapy. counseling because it is so sad when yeah. we hear somebody has taken their own life. It is so, so sad. Yet, probably they would have been helped to deal with that stressful situation they were going through, mm -hmm. and they leave because life is really precious. All so right. it is wrong, Jane, to suppress your emotions. Do not suppress Feel the emotions. emotions, deal with the emotions. If you're not able to, Seek go help. and seek help all right now finally looking at the aspect of again another misconception about uh, physical and nutritional wellness are this crash diets that people go on in a bid to lose weight um, very briefly do crash diets really work and if they work what are the consequences and pros that come with that very briefly we're almost out of time as a professional uh, nutritionist mm -hmm. uh, I'll speak from a professional point of view Yes, those crash diets work. Mm -hmm. I'll just give an example of one. For example, keto diet. Keto yes. diet simply means you're not taking your carbohydrates. I know people who have lost weight through keto diet. But as a professional, my question is, are you going to lose that weight drastically and then you've not developed healthy habits and then when you stop keto, you pile back all the weight. So you're always on a vicious cycle. Mm. As a professional, when I'm dealing with my clients, what I want for them is a lifestyle change, is a lifestyle change. And even if you insist on the keto, I may, I may allow you to do it. If you're very desperate about weight loss, most of the people who choose keto are people who, whose weight has really gone up and they are really, really desperate about losing that weight. Mm -hmm. I may allow you for a period of time to do it, but after that, or in the process, my main aim is adapt. for you to develop healthy eating habits and healthy lifestyle such that even if we come out of keto mm -hmm. i'm not going to have you back weighing Ground 90 zero. kilograms so we need to understand here mm. what is key when it comes to health wellness and weight loss okay daily healthy habits, habits. that is what haba na haba hujaza kibaba. exactly now we'll have to pause at this particular point but we're definitely going to have a second part to finish up with this discussion because wellness health and wellness is not just something that is singular it is a multifaceted area that requires different you know pillars put together to ensure that your well-being is focusing on your entire body and not just one part and neglecting the other. But uh, due to the constraint of time, we're going to pause at that particular point. We have been speaking with Emily Wahome. She is a nutritionist and author. She has uh, put her book just there, uh, The Journey to Purpose, as well as a wellness coach. Thank you so much for making time today. We look forward to part two of this discussion. Thank you so much for having me. Kari Busana. Have a good day. Brings us to a close of Good Morning Kenya. Thank you for being with us. Be sure to join us again tomorrow morning for another beautiful edition of Good Morning Kenya. I'm Jinwan Boy. Do enjoy the rest of your viewing.